Welcome to the garden at the end of May. Very different from a month before. You can see straight away these hostas uh, nearly in full leaf now. Still completely untouched by slugs. Still jolly good. And you can see that these clematis are still sitting there in their pots. They were mystery bargains and I'm waiting to find out what they are before I plant them up. Except for this one, which is labelled. I know what that is. Just going to turn and stand in front of the back of the house where I get my main view of the immediate part of the garden. So I do a lot of standing and gazing. So the birds flitting in front of us every so often. I just noticed yesterday that oh, you perhaps can't make it out but the Clematis Montana Wilsonia is absolutely covered in buds up here. That'll be a sight in a week or two. As we walk under the Rose Arbour, Rambling Rector above it is also a mass of buds and looks set to be very early this year. And at this point, in case I forget, I'm just going to turn and show you the the wisteria is beginning to colour up at the top, but at the on the lower branches, I tidied it up in my winter pruning, and um, I think the lower branches are going to be devoid of flowers this year. But it'll be even better again next year. So as you notice the tulips and the pots around this area. April has been brilliant for tulips, although they began to suffer from lack of rain. Climbing rose, Claire Austin, that. The hellebores will need cutting back, or the flowers will need cutting off in a little while, but there's still some life in them yet. So we walk past the entrance to the, the woodland and see the bluebells and wild garlic and the path almost disappears underneath the foliage here. So we'll see in a minute. So we turn past the shed. I do try and deadhead the the wild garlic to stop it spreading, but um, not very successfully, it seems. And we turn. Near the main herbaceous borders. There's more hostas in front of them. And Magnolia Susan, which has been magnificent this year. In these borders, the Allium, Aquilegia and Astrantia, the three A's, are beginning to flower. There's the bronze heuchera bed, with the Acea grisium above it, not yet coming into leaf. And the woodland edge border. So the seasonal interest here is is changing from the common snowdrop and the hellebores, as you'll see as we wander down to the bottom end, because the rhododendrons are starting to flower. And um, in a few weeks will be a real sort of tapestry of colour here, foliage and blooms. As you see here, we have my favourite foliage plant, Persicaria red dragon, and adjacent to that, the fresh leaves of Epimedium, which was only cut back 
of its foliage a few weeks ago. That's smothered again. So I just turn, we'll look back at the, the view from there. And these are the bold borders, the intention there, really any, any colour, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And the perennials in the pots are certainly looking more promising now that they've got foliage on them. Through the gate. The sweet peas on both the sets of supports here now. And some plug plant lettuces planted underneath. And I've been planting out some dahlias here. Still more to come, but these are the, the most advanced of the ones I've got. I've also been planting out in the cutting beds. As I can show you better around the side of the greenhouse. So they've certainly relished the, the rain we had on Tuesday. But it's spotting now, but certainly just the sort of weather to help the plants settle in. More dahlias in the, the greenhouse, waiting until they're ready to go out. And various bedding plant plugs. They're waiting for the tulips to finish before they go out into their pots. And the early sweet peas. Nearly enough for a little palsy now. At the bottom end, not quite as crowded and certainly not as much pressure here for space as there was before. Make our way out again towards the blue and white borders. Still mostly green, but we now have got splashes of colour from forget-me-nots and Brunnera. A nice little combination there. This comfrey here, Hidcut Blue, the dwarf one, is fantastic for bees. There are a few buzzing around there. At the moment, but often it's absolutely covered. And the rose garden, all the roses are in bud. And it's a race on to see which one will be in flower first. But um, I don't know which one my money's on. We're going underneath the clematis colonnade. There's that magnolia again on the the gallery fence. The trees seem to have become fully clothed in no time at all. You can see all the clutter's gone because the golfers finished re-roofing the shed, which fortunately no longer leaks. First flare on a purple rhododendron at the back, they're dark purple. Really pleased to see that. I've had it so long, I don't know what it is anymore. See all the petals have come off the apple trees above us. I'll try to remember to turn around and show you some of the remaining blossom. The cornice has been cut down since last month. It's a nice dark leaved honesty there. 
the stream is gurgling away since I topped it up with tap water this time because it was just evaporating so quickly and I was running out of rainwater. These witch hazels here fully in leaf now. Grass here might look a mess. That's um, still got daffodil foliage in, so I'll be waiting a few weeks before I cut that back down. Just turn at this point. Here's the apple blossom. Perhaps past its best with the rain now, but of course it's been beautiful. There's a gold finish just flown in there. It's a quick peep in the, the coop, which is almost empty. You can see a very late amaryllis, two amaryllis there. And down towards the, the coop corner, still with the scaffolding sadly. So some of the pots and the collection of frogs are uh, still waiting to go back into the corner. A beautiful Pullman area there. Clematis Almondii on the fence. Other mini hostas down here. Just going to take you down into the shady corner. See where the scaffolding is. That's where the pots of ferns should be. Perhaps next month they'll be gone. So do come back and see. Thanks for watching.